Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about Field Day 2019, or more specifically, my field station configuration for Field Day 2019. So I'm going to give you a rundown of the field station. I'm going to give you a rundown of the radio, the shelter, the portable power, the mode of transportation, and everything that went into making this MAM portable deployment possible. Now I'm going to tell you up front, field day is supposed to be about emergency communications and preparedness for amateur radio operators. But increasingly, amateur radio organizations around the world tend to focus on the contesting aspect of field day, rather than the field deployment aspects of field day. And that's totally okay. You're not going to hear a word from me about contesting, and instead, we're going to focus on the station. So, if you stick with me a while, I'll show you my solar-powered field station. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. So my field day started with a 12 kilometer or about seven and a half mile ride on my fat bike. This is important for field day because I often try to promote the concept of a completely self-contained MAM portable field station. So loading up my bike with my radio, my shelter, my antennas and everything else required for the field station is more of a proof of concept than anything else. So I want you to bear with me for a while and imagine the bike being an intricate part of the field station. Just doing so will help me make the case for lightweight lithium iron phosphate batteries and to prove once and for all to those disbelievers who say what we're doing with a lightweight MAM portable field station is impossible. But enough of all that for now. Let's go ahead and break down all of the components which went into this solar powered field station. This field day I was running JS8 call and operating QRO. So I took out the Raspberry Pi powered Yezu FT891. Since I was operating off grid and without the internet, I used a GPS to sync up the Raspberry Pi's time. The benefits of using the GPS were, uh, well, of course, having an accurate grid locator in JS8 call, also having an accurate time in my logbook, and finally, not having to manually sync up my start and stop times in JS8 call. Now, if for some reason the GPS would have failed, I could always go ahead and sync up manually through the time shift in JS8 call. Fortunately, this setup worked flawlessly as it has on many different occasions. Now, I've already done a video on how this all works, the GPS, the Raspberry Pi, and the Yezu FT891. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out that video. Next, we can take a look at the portable power aspects of the field station. So what you're looking at is my 45 amp hour or 576 watt hour lithium iron phosphate solar storage system. This is the battery, the charge controller and the power distribution side of the solar generator system. The system has four individually fused DC outputs as well as two fused USB outputs. At the moment, it has two solar inputs wired in parallel going to a single charge controller, but that'll change pretty soon when we add an additional charge controller. The system can put out 60 amps continuous across all of the DC ports. So powering the Yezu FT891 and the Raspberry Pi is extremely light work for this solar generator. Naturally, a solar generator is not complete unless it has these solar panels to power it. For this field day, I powered the system with two Powerfilm Solar R28 rollable panels. These two R28s supplied the system with an almost constant 3 amps coming in, which was more than enough to power the radio and the Raspberry Pi on receive. And these panels generated enough power to top up the battery storage system after each transmission with JS8 call. 
If you're interested in learning more about portable battery and solar power for amateur radio communications, I'll leave you a link in the description. So now let's take a look at my field day antenna system. Naturally, when we're operating MAM Portable, there's a finite amount of load or carrying capacity. So it was incredibly important to remove any component or part of the system which didn't contribute to effective operation of the field station. So for this field day, I actually left the antenna tuner at home. Now you just can't dump the antenna tuner without coming up with a solution that removes the requirement for that antenna tuner. Now in order to do this, I actually combined pieces from two of my favorite portable antennas into a single hybrid Frank antenna type system. For this system, I used the Super Antenna MP1 and a couple of its extension rods. And I used the Chameleon Mill Whip 2.0 as a collapsible vertical whip. I put everything on top of the Super Antenna tripod. I put two extension rods and the Super Antenna MP1 coil with the Chameleon Mill Whip 2.0 up top. I added three quarter wave ground radials for 20 and 40 meters and dialed it all in, tuned it up. Naturally, the key benefit here is removing the antenna tuner. But this antenna configuration also offers us a key benefit, and that is it acts very much like a quarter wave vertical antenna. So changing bands isn't as quick as it would be with an antenna tuner. But what I've lost in convenience, I've actually gained in performance. So you do the math. Now I'm certain some of you will be asking why I didn't just deploy a dipole. But to deploy a dipole or the apex of a dipole high enough, I need to carry the equipment to launch it in a tree. So again, not wanting to carry any additional equipment for launching something into a tree, I think this MP1 with the uh, Chameleon Mill Whip 2.0 was an excellent quarter wave like solution for field day. So now let's talk about my field day shelter. For this field day, I was using the Nortent Lavo or TP4. This is a modular four-man TP tent, which has a ground sheet and inner tent. Now, if you've been around the channel for a while, you've probably seen the Lavo or TP6 that I normally use in larger expeditions. I still have that system, but it's a little bit too much for a single man field day or expedition. The TP4 has all of the features and functionalities as its big brother, the TP6, but it's much more packable. Now, because of its modularity, I can deploy it simply as the TP or the TP with the inner tent or the TP with the inner tent and ground sheet or any combination of those. For this deployment, I carried both the TP and the inner tent. And I packed and carried those on the front loader handlebar pack on my fat bike. Now, to be completely honest with you, I have to tell you I was seriously freaking out about riding with the, uh, the TP, the inner tent, and that center pole all packed into that front loader handlebar pack. In the end, it was light enough that I could hardly notice it while I was riding, and I think it was the perfect addition to my MAM portable field configuration. I think for those of us who are serious about MAM portable field communications, a shelter is a critical consideration. The shelter is definitely the best way to add all weather capabilities to our field operations. Now, I'm sure you're already waiting for it, and you know what I'm going to say next. If you're interested in the Nortent TP4 or TP6, I'll leave information for you in the description. So now it's time to talk about mobility and portability. I mean, with the exception of the summits on the air or some of the radar challenge operators, we rarely talk about how we actually get there. Now, I know this might sound crazy, but I believe how we get there, how we deploy, is just as important as the radio equipment we use once we get there. 
Let's say that in a different way. If you're able to take your entire home station using your truck or your trailer or your camper and taking it out in the field, then you'll probably never experience the rawest form of field communications. And we actually end up missing the field communications lessons. Now, from time to time, I've mentioned on the channel how I believe the most successful field radio operators are those who have experience operating with a finite amount of equipment in the field. That is to say, the most important lessons we learn about field communications are learned by us when we have a minimal amount of gear out in the field to support our operations. When we are operating MAM Portable, we are forced to take only the equipment which is absolutely necessary for effective field communications. All those knickknacks or nice-to-haves are left behind at home. So for this field day, I actually deployed my station using my electric fat bike. So I carried my entire station the seven and a half miles or about 12 kilometers with all of my radio equipment, the entire field station loaded on my panniers and in my backpack. So as I mentioned a moment ago, this is an electric fat bike. It's got a 250 watt integrated motor and 80 Newton meters of torque. But unlike a traditional fat bike, it has no throttle, so you have to pedal it all the time. So the electric fat bike is powered by a 672 watt hour lithium ion pack. So operating at the lowest assist level, it gives me about 100 to 110 kilometers of range or 60 to 68 miles across flat ground. Now my goal is to use the assist only when it's absolutely necessary so I can disable that and use it as a normal bike until I need it. Now, I also have some cool technology on the bike. Of course, I've got the GoPro because I want to capture the moment for all of you. I also installed a quad lock so I can use APRS from the phone along with navigation. Now, all of those features are fine, but I think the most important feature of all is being able to plug in my solar panels with a boost converter and charging it up in the field. Now, I'm certain some of you are just waiting to ask if I can power my amateur radio station with the battery pack on the electric fat bike. The answer is absolutely yes, but I don't have a DC-DC buck converter large enough to power the station at full power. If you all show enough interest in the comments, I think I can go ahead and order a DC-DC buck converter to get 12 volts out of that electric fat bike pack. And look, if nothing else, we're definitely going to have lots of adventures this summer and of course next winter with the solar powered field station and the electric fat bike. So let's talk about what I'm hoping you took away from this video. First of all, reducing the station size and complexity. This is absolutely a no brainer. Not only is a smaller station easier to set up, it also gives the radio operator confidence using a less complex station without all the bells and whistles. Next, I hope you all promote the idea along with me of practicing truly portable radio deployments. There's a reason they call it portable ham radio and field day, and neither of these include our couches or our kitchen sinks. Just try it from time to time and I promise you the experience will make us all better operators. Now one of the things I didn't mention earlier in the video was the fact that I was chased away from my operating location by a lightning storm. There's not a whole lot we can do about lightning, but rain or snow or sleet, things like that, we can overcome by having a shelter or tarp for our stations when we're operating in the field. Uh, finally, I'd like to promote the idea of going further while actually carrying less radio gear. What you see in this image is my entire field station. This is everything I need for a multi-day deployment of digital and voice operations. The station includes the radio, Raspberry Pi, audio interface, battery, solar panels, and the antenna. That's it for a multi-day deployment. 
Use the comments to give me feedback on this video and the field station and please feel free to tell us about your own field day experiences. Every piece of information we share with one another makes us all stronger in the field. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.